Your other point about the effect of the upsurge in osteoblast activity, again, plays into this notion that we really don't have enough understanding of what's going on. So that osteoclast, uh, sorry, osteoblast surge, which was described in 1978, um, present in about a third of patients, um, that's on bone scan. But I suspect that there is an osteoblast over, over spill, if you will, or overreaction in many more patients. And it may be that that's the point where you would use this osteoblast uptake phenomenon in bone meds. Yeah, and, um, and possibly if this end. trial had been abiraterone and then radium starting three months later, yeah. it would have had a, com oh, yeah, plus with bone protection, bone I protection. think it might have seen a completely different thing. Yeah. Yes, you, I mean, I, 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 I must say I thought there would be a synergy with, the, with you know, we know that ionizing radiation and, yeah. and, and targeting the androgen receptor is, is, is synergistic in local yeah, radiotherapy in the pelvis. Yeah. And do you think these, the, the results of the ERA 2 to 3, what, what, what does it mean for clinical practice, Nick? Do you think it's going to change anything? Well, it hasn't changed the license in North America, uh, Canada, USA, and in Japan, yeah. but it has changed the license to a degree in Europe. Um, now, if you look at the EMA uh, changes, it recommends that you should have had two lines of CRPC treatment. It's a bit vague as to exactly what that means, yeah. and, and it allows you to have only had one line if you're not eligible for other lines. So, for example, in the UK, where we can't use Abby and Enza back to back, it means that if, you, if you're not fit for chemo, you never get to two lines of therapy. Yeah. So in reality, I don't think it's changed things very much at all because it's a bit of a slippery concept as to who exactly is fit for chemo at any point. Um, so I don't think in reality that the license has changed, but I think the message it sends is, is, is actually not a correct one. It sends a message this is a dangerous drug, yeah. whereas actually the data from Alsimca is that it's an effective drug that prolongs survival. Yeah. Uh, and like all drugs, you have to use them carefully and minimize harm. Yeah. And I think that it's, that it's from, from ERA 223 and Alsimca, it's very clear that you minimize harm and maximize benefit by giving bone protection with it. So I think that's the lesson I would take away, is that with longer survivals, bone protection is more important than people in the past thought it was with short survivals. Yeah, from the osteoporosis point of view, rather yeah. than from the... From but, the but I don't think it proves this is a dangerous drug. It, it proves it's a dangerous drug if you co-administer it simultaneously with abiraterone, yes. and definitely yeah. you shouldn't do that. That's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. I think in a practical sense, uh, it, it will have an effect, yeah. in that what we know is that the natural history of the disease is that as, you, as the patient gets further into their journey, uh, the number of visceral metastases goes up yeah. and, and we have a restriction um, arbitrarily a, a applied in my view which is that if, if in the UK certainly that if a patient has, has uh, non-bone metastases we, we actually can't give it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it pushes the administration of 223 further back in the cycle of treatment and, and more patients will be ineligible for it when perhaps they might have benefited had it been given earlier. Well interesting, the EMA license um, sort of appendices or whatever they are, um, also says you shouldn't give it beyond third line for the exact, so you've got a kind of got a tight window, tight window, tight window. And, I, I, and, I, and I think a bit of an artificial window, not a terribly evidence supported, well it is supported by the evidence here but it, this isn't what we will do in the future. We definitely won't do what was done in era 223 for all the reasons we've just been discussing. I think, I think one of the most disagreeable um, recommendations in, in, the, in the new label is the idea that patients should have an ALKFOS level greater than 220. Yeah. And the, which, you know, as we know, was a stratification factor in the Alsimca trial, quite arbitrarily, really, based on yeah. a median in the phase two trial. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, interested to know what you think, Noel. Do you think an ALKFOS of 220 is, is in any way predictive of benefit from radium 223? Uh, on the basis of the evidence, no. Um, what we can see uh, is that alkaline phosphatase is a predictor of, of progression and prognosis, yeah. but not of response to the drug. Because 220 is quite a high level of ALKFOS. It is, yeah. 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 It, it, I mean, this is one of my favourite hobby horses, is the misinterpretation of forest plots. Yes. So if, Go. You, <laughs> if you take a trial, you power it for an outcome, um, you will need however many patients you need, 600 patients, uh, whatever it was in Alcimca. If you then slice it up into subgroups, all of the subgroups are instantly underpowered. Yes. And so in this case, they're seeing giving... Uh, in, so the patients with the lower ALKFOS are the patients with the better prognosis and therefore the lower event rate. So straight away you're underpowered. And what you're looking for in a forest plot is, that, is there any evidence that the effect differs in different subgroups? You're not looking to see whether an individual hazard ratio, 95% com confidence in intervals, crosses one. You're looking to see whether the effect is different in the different subgroups. And 
In the forest plot for the Alsimka trial, there is no evidence of differential benefit in different subgroups. Of course, the point estimates fluctuate around, but yes. that's just yeah. random yeah. biology. Yeah, it's it not seems like statistical uh, yes. illiteracy to be it commenting on. Yeah. Well, I, I hate to say it uh, about an, a, a, a Europe-wide regulation body, but it does look to be statistical illiteracy, yes. Because the other, um, the, similarly, uh, the, the number of metastases, less than six metastases just crosses the, the one. Exactly one. the same yeah, consideration. So the same subgroup yes. analysis, yeah. yeah. So the whole trial is positive. It's positive for all the patients in the trial, unless you've got convincing evidence of heterogeneity of effect, and there was no evidence of heterogeneity yeah. of effect.